shit. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. I just got... I just... My heart. I just got a notification that there's an update with my application. My hands are just... They're shaking. This is like my entire future. I'm so scared to scroll. Okay, this is it. Okay, so whatever happens. Hi, my name is Jekka and what you're looking at right now is the day when my life changed forever. But we're gonna have to backtrack a bit to when it all started because it's kind of a long story. So it all began in 2007 and I had let my mom convince me that this blue monochromatic outfit which hey it's probably back in style now in 2021 this was like a fashionable ensemble to wear on my first international flight and we my mom and i were headed to sunny california and we did it all napa valley golden gate bridge disneyland I even have this picture of Mickey Mouse walking out on my only picture with him. I couldn't help but notice how the opportunities there are so different from back home. And that trip to the US planted the teeniest, tiniest seed of a dream that will become my trajectory for the next decade. Fast forward some years later, I had just earned my bachelor's degree in multimedia arts. Now 2015 turned out to be one of the best years of my life because I was freelancing full time and I fully enjoyed the freedom to work whenever I want. My biggest client at that time was Hallmark eCards. I talked briefly about how I landed them as a client in this other video, but basically my brother bought rabbits. I saw them form a heart shape. I made an animation based on those rabbits and that's how Hallmark found me, through rabbits. I feel like I sound crazy, but that's what happened. Aside from Hallmark, I was also animating for an indie film called The Goddess Project. And then that same year, I had a print feature in a national newspaper and my thesis film, Cupid Serenade, had gotten into the New Shitose Airport International Animation Festival in Japan. And so they invited me to go there to attend the ceremony. So I'm like, oh my god! I'm gonna go to Japan! Not only that, my film won an award there and then after the festival, I took a detour to Universal Studios so I can make one of my other dreams come true which is to go visit the Wizarding World of Harry Potter. That whole year was like... That was the very first time when I really felt like my art can actually take me places. I look back really fondly on that year because it was like a lot of dreams coming true left and right and I felt like I was so on top of the world. But despite all of that, I still really really wanted to migrate. What if I try looking at other countries? In comes New Zealand, the first country that I tried to migrate to. I actually applied for a school. Now because of like my achievements and my body of work, the school granted me a near 50% scholarship, which is like the highest they can give to an international student. So great, okay, amazing. But the catch is, I don't know now, but like back then, you need to pay for your entire education upfront. I would need almost half a million Philippine pesos. No, we did not have an extra half a million pesos. But then, you know, I wasn't gonna give up without trying. So I asked them, could I just push back my application so that I can have some time to earn this money for school? And then they were like, okay, fine. That's, that was where I was at the end of 2015. But my heart was dead set on migrating to the US because they had Nickelodeon and Disney. Those were like the dream companies to work for, especially for a young artist. I did try to apply for these jobs in the US hoping that they'll grant me a work permit. I didn't hear back from any of them. So in early 2016, I flew back to the US to see what options do I actually have. So my only other option was, again, 
the student visa route. It's a lot of money involved, a lot of money that I did not have. But there was actually a third option for me, and that option is called the O-1 visa. Now, the O-1 visa, according to the good old internet, is for individuals who possess extraordinary abilities must be recognized as prominent in the field of their endeavor. Now, ideally, if you won something big like an Oscar or like an Academy Award, not that I don't consider that <laughs> how to be a very idealistic 20-something-year-old thinking that, yeah, yeah, I could totally win an Oscar, but if you don't have an Oscar lying around, there's actually like this whole checklist of eligibility and you need at to check at least three of those to qualify. And as it turns out, I qualified for four of those. All those years I, of me just doing my own thing, being really passionate about art and animation and pouring my heart and soul into like every piece that I made, they were, as the eligibility requirements state, a record of extraordinary achievement. You can imagine, we were all like, oh my god, this is it, this is, this is it. All my relatives there were like, oh my god, you're so lucky, like you wouldn't have to go through all our hardships to migrate to the US. I really believe that this was it. This was when my dream was gonna come true in 2016. And after that, once I get my O-1 visa, then I can apply for jobs in like Disney and Nickelodeon and all of these big studios. And it just felt like this was my dream come true. And even the immigration attorney that we consulted with, she was like, yeah, I can help you with that. And so we paid a down payment of 2,000 US dollars and my attorney was like, okay, great, thank you. Yeah, you can go back home and wait for us to process your paperwork. So we flew back home to the Philippines. And for three months, we were just waiting for my immigration attorney to get back to me on any progress or updates. She finally got back to me and she said that it turns out I'm not eligible for an O-1 visa. Okay, don't cry. That authority got my hopes up and we gave a down payment and everything and uh, they decided to drop my case. She refunded our deposit except for a consultation fee which is 350 US dollars, which is crazy big. My heart just broke like, oh my God. Whew. No, I didn't think I was gonna cry. <laughs> like, I'm over it. I'm definitely over it. I'm much happier here in Canada. But at that time, I really, really believed that this was my dream coming true for me. And that's when I learned to never look forward to things unless there's tangible proof, like a flight ticket or a student permit. And not only that, but remember how I was applying for a school in New Zealand, but I just needed some time to save up half a million Philippine pesos? Well, I did not reach my goal. And so with the US not working out and then New Zealand not working out, I just felt crushed and I felt so stuck. I was mostly very very angry that the only reason that my dream is not coming true is because of a lack of money. But at the same time, I was like, you know what, there's a higher power at play here and there's probably a reason why I'm not being led to the US and then maybe, maybe I'm being guided somewhere else, somewhere better for me. And 2016 felt like such a blur and I was just trying to occupy myself with work so that I can save money. Freelancing was actually still going pretty well for me. Like I was still working with Hallmark eCards, I just illustrated my first published children's book, and I also started working with bigger clients like Facebook. I was also working on my YouTube channel. Despite all that, my personal growth felt really stunted because I wouldn't let myself put down roots in the Philippines or get settled in the Philippines. Because I always knew, I always knew that I would be moving. And I also really leaned into not having a social life so that I don't waste money on 
going out. And as for my mental state, I would I felt like I was going up and down. This is fine, you know, this is gonna happen for me. I just have to believe and keep working towards it. And then I would have lows where I'm just crying, so frustrated. Why is this not happening? I did not know when I would be moving. Maybe I could finally have the money to migrate when I'm 50. And so I was just in this constant state of limbo this part of the story. I feel like there's been enough time between then and now that I can talk about this. In 2017, BuzzFeed, they really seemed interested in hiring me. Don't be scared. Everything is okay. Whatever happens will happen. Just call. Hello? <clears throat> Hello? Okay, so I don't know what to do next. Um, well, they said that they really want to make this happen for me and they're gonna try to work with me to get an O1 visa. And they're hoping to get me sometime early next year, hopefully. If I pass... Okay, I gotta tell my parents. And again, it felt like, oh my god, this is it! Maybe that's why the first thing didn't work out because this was gonna happen. It felt like my dream was gonna come true. But I learned my lesson from 2016 and I did not let myself get too hopeful unless I had like tangible proof. While I was working with their lawyer on gathering all my documents, which I already had gathered from 2016, they suddenly said that they're no longer interested in hiring me because of recent layoffs. But you know, I had braced myself for this. So 2017 is when I considered moving to Canada. It's probably the next best place for a career in the art and entertainment industry. So in March of 2017, I signed up with a consultancy to help me fix or gather my paperwork for my study permit application. And then I took my English test. But again, money was an issue for me as it always was, it's so frustratingly so. Again, international tuition fees are so expensive. They're three times the amount of tuition fees for domestic students for just, they just want to make it expensive. Hold on, let me grab something. So you know how, you know with manifestation, they're like, write down exactly what you need so you can manifest it. Well, I have this journal. I wrote down, I had like one, two, three options. One of them is a student visa route. Two of them are the express entry route with two different consultancies. So they each had their own fees. I was like weighing out all my options and that way I had like this really handy checklist and I even drew like little monies, monies on the bottom, bills, monies. I even had like pros and cons. The main thing here is I wrote down exactly the amount I needed for this, broken down into like separate individual fees. And then I worked like nobody's business. I was not a novice to working hard, but now I'm like, this is, I am gonna make this happen. I pursued opportunities, I reached out to past clients, I pitched them ideas of what I could do for them so that they didn't have to think of a project to assign to me. We had like an international book fair and I got a list of all the exhibitors that they had. And I cold called these publishers and I was like, hi, I'm an illustrator, who can I get in touch with? And then they gave me contact details details and then I sent cold emails to these people and then I made a bunch of personal work and then I got in contact with media outlets in the Philippines this is what I can do for you so it was a lot of hustling and by the end of 2018 I had saved up for my first milestone here which is the course deposit fee and the funny thing was that each time I reach these monetary goals it would always end up being exactly the amount that I needed. All these months where I was thinking that there was no way, no way on earth that I would make this whole dream thing work for me. And then now it's like, I just signed this contract, this godsend of a contract. And this is real. I'm just realizing it now that, oh, I'm crying again. <laughs> but like, you know, me going to fulfill my biggest dream <laughs> so 
So I got an email from my immigration consultancy. So they said that I qualify for admission at Centennial College. I still need to pay my course deposit, but it's getting there. Ito na yun! Kaya huwag ka na maiistress at huwag ka magkakasakit. Ako na lang mag-isa magmumul. Ako na lang mag-isa magmumul dun. You pray for it. Smooth ang maging flow. Para ma-fulfill mo na ang dream mo sa buhay. This clip that I'm about to show is um, my application was accepted by the school and I was invited to pay for my course deposit and I wanted to tell my dad about it. Baka matuloy ako. Papag-usapan na natin na lang ako nagyan. Baka early next year. April pa. Baka yun ang destiny niyan. Wala, sa states hindi siya na-approve. Meron ka na bang nakaredy? Malapit na. Just a few weeks after this clip, my dad passed away. And he never saw me attain my biggest dream in life. But I like to think that he is looking down on me proudly. So I just paid my course deposit for my school. And it's a huge amount of money that I've been setting aside so that means that there's no backing out of this but i've dreamt of moving abroad and living abroad for so long i i just i have to try this for myself even if it ends up not working and i just decide to go back at least i know that it's not for me i have to try it so initially i had uh, wanted to go to school for the summer 2019 semester but because of recent events i pushed back my enrollment to fall 2019. okay so you know how i took my english test in 2017 before i was financially ready to actually go to school well english tests for whatever reason expire in two years Yes, apparently you could forget English in two years. And at this point in my story, it's 2019. So it's two years after I took my English exam. I did not want to retake this exam because first of all, it's really draining. And second of all, it's so expensive. So I had no choice, but I had to enroll like right now. So summer of 2019, I was paid my final pending invoice from one of my client pro projects. And again, I had the exact amount that I needed to pay for my remaining tuition fee. I started gathering all my documents for my study permit. But life had a few more hurdles ahead. <laughs> you need show money. But the good thing about um, applying for Canada is you don't need the show money in your bank account. You just need like somebody to sponsor you. And the thing, another thing. There are so many things. Bank statements, they also have a validity period. So it's one of those, the last things that you gather as part of your study permit documents. I thought that somebody was gonna help me with the show money. They backed out. I guess I understand, but just the feeling of having to work on something for five years. And then when you're just at the very near the finish line this happens so now we're just scrambling to find like a sponsor for the show money i needed like 1.2 million for show money i don't have 1.2 million i literally only have the amount for my first semester and then i mentioned we don't really know anybody in canada so i don't even know where i'm gonna live fortunately we were able to find a relative of mine who was actually willing to provide these documents of sponsorship for me. My mom and I hopped immediately, spontaneously, on a four-hour bus ride to where she lived just to get these documents because they need to be like signed. You can't just email them. It was like a, such an insane time. It felt like right out of a movie. And I don't want to say names for privacy purposes, obviously, but if you're watching this, you are my guardian angel and I literally would not be here without your help. So thank you, like honestly. Oh, thank you. Oh. Stop crying! So I'm compiling my documents to submit to my consultancy so that I can check if I have everything that I need before we submit my study permit application. So I photocopied this much 
papers. This is a giant bag filled with requirements, documents. But everything, like everything was to the wire. I was literally racing against the clock, which is the expiry of my English test. Currently today, it's Friday, May 3. My medical exam will be on Monday because it's the next available date. The results can take three to five working days. We need to submit the documents by May 10. So everything is hanging on the line for May 10. I had to stop by a computer shop to scan and print my passport. The stupid thing is I left my passport in the computer shop. I had to get a grab delivery person bring my passport to me. The first time that my consultancy compiled all of these, I got goosebumps because it took me five freaking years to get to this. So okay, now I have all of my documents. I applied for my study permit. Maybe I can like check my visa application status once a day. Okay, there's no results yet. Still no results. Still processing. So, which brings me to where we left off at the beginning of this video. Shit, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. I just got... I just... My heart... I just got a notification that there's an update with my application. My hands are just you're shaking. This is like my entire future. I'm so scared to scroll. Okay, this is it. Okay, so whatever happens. My study permit was finally approved. <laughs> Double checking, triple checking if my visa sticker really was in my passport. I wanted to stare at it because all of this hard work for five years just to finally deserve that one sticker. Yes! So I just got my ticket and it's in here. It's real. I'm really leaving. Like for real, real. You see, I go with the wind, the crazy sun. I'm going to next Bye. Yeah. Um, yeah, so uh, I, I don't know. It's like there's this underlying feeling of panic. Was it the right decision? Literally, all my money is on this. And oh my god, all my money is on this thing. I don't even know if I, I'll like it or if it's the right decision or if will I even regret doing this. I think I'm just scared. It's the night before my flight. I can literally hear an airplane right now and it's making everything surreal in a way. It just makes me sad that I can't even explain to my cat that I'm gonna be leaving for a while.
So, I'm filming this May 2021, but I'm in freaking Toronto, Canada. I've just graduated not just from one program, but two programs, which never in my wildest dreams would I ever thought I could afford. I'm currently in the middle of applying for a three-year work permit. And I'm about to adopt a cat. Just sometimes I just still can't believe I'm actually here. And then just looking back at the timeline of all of this happening, like now I understand why my migration didn't happen sooner. Because then I would have missed out on my cousin's wedding, my brother's weddings, my nieces being born. I wouldn't have been by my dad's side when he passed away. I ended up moving for a fall 2019 semester. The last semester right before the world shut down. And had I gone with my original plan of the summer 2019 program, which was in April, I wouldn't have met my teacher who is now my boss who hired me for full time right as soon as I graduated. The timing of all of this is unbelievable and I'm just so thankful that despite all the anger of all the questioning why is this not happening for me now I know why I'm just I'm happy ah, I, I need to stop crying <laughs> but now I, I know why and I'm just I'm so thankful that it happened this way and all the people who... <laughs> all the people who helped me, even at the time when I was still trying for the US and New Zealand. And yeah, but my mom's co-worker who let me live with them for my first six months here. And of course, my family who gave me all the support and strength that I needed to make it. Everything turned out perfectly well. All this to say is, if you have a dream, it's so cliche, but it's so true. You believe in it, believe that it will happen, and then take concrete actions towards it happening. All the aches and pains and sacrifices, you're gonna forget how bad they felt at the time, and you're gonna be so thankful that you went through it. Your life is always going to be in your hands. And that is my story. I hope you found some inspiration in all this. And to my future self, the world is now your oyster. And I can't wait to see what you're gonna do in the next decade. And I, I'm so hungry. I wanna eat my cookies. Ugh. Okay, I'm gonna end this video. So if you found this video inspiring or entertaining or whatever, you enjoyed it, then please give it a thumbs up. It really helps with the YouTube algorithm. As always, create your own adventures. And I honestly, really, truly mean that. Create your own art venture. I'm gonna see you in the next video.